I think the work-life balance while working in Taipei was really great. I had plenty of time to plan during the day, so I wasn't spending a lot of time taking work home or doing after-school work, like lesson planning or anything. I was able to get it done during the day. Sometimes I did stay after school, especially if you decide to teach additional English classes after school. And sometimes we did come in on Saturdays, but it was always something that we knew in advance and could plan for. Um, you don't get as many days off as you might as at a Western school. You know, you, you don't always have um, a three-day weekend every month like you might at a, um, a school in the States, but you do get lots of breaks. So you will be able to get a break for Independence Day and Dragon Boat Festival. So yeah, I think the, on, um, the work-life balance is uh, probably a little bit better than um, what I'm experiencing here in the States. There are, uh, in, the, in the kindergarten specifically, there are generally seven, seven teachers, seven foreign teachers. Um, but the, the whole compound is kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So you also have the elementary school teachers who you know, you're pretty close with. And then there are even foreign high school teachers who you don't see as much. So all together, what's that, about 20 or so? Yes, you will have a local homeroom teacher in the classroom with you. However, it's not necessarily required that that homeroom teacher um, assist you in the lesson. Sometimes the teachers might use that time um, to check workbooks or go over their communication logs and things like that. But typically, yes, there will be a local teacher with you in the classroom. For every, uh, for every classroom, there are 30 students. Now, sometimes there's 29. I don't believe it goes over 30. But with 30 students and, and three teachers, the, the student-to-teacher ratio ends up being about 10 to 1, which is not bad. So in some ways, the assessments are up to the teachers. Um, the, there will be a semesterly test for the kindergarten students, um, if it's the same as when I was there, and that basically just tests their letter sounds, their letter names, uh, their knowledge of basic vocabulary and words and instructions and things like that, which is good because that gives you kind of a baseline of where you need to start with instruction for certain kids. You'll also have student workbooks to grade, so you'll be doing the student workbook um, throughout the lessons throughout the weeks and so by the end of the week you'll have kind of a knowledge of where they stand and how they're doing with the workbooks. You can also use the weekly communication book to communicate progress with parents as well. Teachers are evaluated I suppose just sort of informally. I mean there are times when the other the other foreign teachers can come in and watch you teach or there will be times when administration watches you, um, but there's no there's no checklist anybody's keeping, as far as I know. Um, I always felt very supported by administration and my co-teachers, and I was always asking for feedback as well from my co-teachers, just seeing if, if there's any way I can help or if there's anything I can do better, and um, I was always open to feedback in that way. But as far as formal evaluations, no, there's not really much of that. I don't believe that speaking Mandarin um, is a necessity to live and teach in Taiwan. First of all, all of your classes are going to be conducted in English because you will be the English teacher. Your co-teachers, most of them will speak English and will speak it very efficiently in order to communicate with you. Um, the Taiwanese administration, the ones that you're interacting with most of the time, do speak English as well. Um, you know, like even in your daily life, getting around, going to cafes and restaurants, most people have some knowledge of English, or if not, they'll be really helpful to, to help you, to help communicate with you. Um, like menus, um, there's English options. And as far as like going to the doctor, um, there's always English speaking services that you can find if um, you seek it out. And just for the most part, everyone there does have a general knowledge of English. I mean, there's signs in English, like, and yeah, everything, there's a lot of English there. Um, now, I do think that if you want to make your life a little bit easier, um, it would help to know some. It would help to just 
it would just make things a little bit smoother like if you want to make a phone call to to order food or you know if you want to take a taxi somewhere again not a necessity but I think it just helps like ease the the daily stress of living the retention rate in Taiwan is excellent uh, the school at Saisheng people want to stay there it's it's a good contract it's a gorgeous school it's modern Taipei is a great city, and a lot of the, the teachers are just good people. I mean, a lot of people form tight friendships with them, and uh, there's not much turnover there, which I think says a lot for the jobs. They want to stick around. That speaks volumes. Um, first of all, Taiwan is awesome. Um, it has a tropical climate, which means that going to the beach and hiking and like any nature-related activity can pretty much happen year round if that's what you want. You know, I'm originally from Chicago, the Midwest, which is incredibly cold in the winter. So this was a really positive aspect for me because I was able to, to go outside in the middle of Taiwan's winter and it was great. Um, Taiwan is incredibly beautiful. Everything is really, really green. It's also one of the most English accessible cities I've lived in in Asia. Um, you can always find something to do. There's night markets, you can try new food, you can explore like a new mountain that's just right behind your apart apartment. Um, there's a bunch of community building events like mental health awareness activities or even mental health um, resources. There's um, open mic nights, poetry nights, you know, you can go to the go to the movie theater and watch any movie or see a show and it's all in English. There's always some kind of English option in, in addition to the Chinese option. You can go to local festivals and parties. Um, so pretty much both the day and the nightlife are really active and you definitely won't be bored. Um, it's really accessible to travel to other cities in Taiwan that are just as beautiful. The transportation is really fast and affordable and like just like just pretty much like everything else in Taiwan, everything is is really affordable. Um, you can also very easily travel outside of Taiwan. When I was there during the Chinese New Year break that we had in February, I one of um, I visited Nepal and I went on a hike in the Him Himalaya Mountains, and that was just one example of the many trips I took while I was there. Um, so it's really affordable and easy to get to other places in Asia if that's what you're interested in doing. Um, so yeah, the only reason that I actually left Taiwan was because I was offered a scholarship job to study for my master's in Chicago. Otherwise, I would definitely still be there. Um, and I'm actually going to be returning there this fall for some time um, because I love it and I miss it so much. So yeah, Taiwan is great. So I would say that getting over some of the cultural differences was definitely a challenge for me, especially when communicating, not just from the language barrier, but communication styles as well. So Americans are very direct and formal and get to the point, and the Taiwanese uh, communication is a little bit different. They um, I take a much softer approach to communication, especially about kind of difficult things. Um, the chain of command is a little bit different at work. You know, sometimes in a Western um, school, you would report directly to your principal. I found at Saishing, it was really important to kind of climb the ladder correctly and steps on some toes unintentionally. So I would definitely make sure to, um, you know, kind of know your place in the chain of command. Um, you know, a lot of the communication in the States is done via email. And, you know, it's the kind of uh, thing where if it's not in writing, you know, it didn't happen. Whereas in Taiwan, it's very important that important things get communicated face to face. So that was kind of a challenge for me that sometimes I would be in a lesson and, um, you know, our liaison, our director would come in and say something important and I have to jot it down right then or else I would forget, you know, and we would tell her, can you send this in an email? And so that was kind of a challenge as well. Um, some kind of like life things, um, having a non, like one-stop shopping was kind of difficult. It took a little while to find your places where you knew you could get certain stuff. You know, there's no Target, there's no Walmart, there's no, well, there is a Costco, um, which is nice. Um, so that was, you know, I remember one time we were looking for a volleyball and, you know, we couldn't just run to Academy. Um, so it was, it was a real challenge hunting down the sports store to find a volleyball, it's hard not having a car on a rainy day where you need to get stuff done, you know, having to stand in the rain with your umbrella. Always take an umbrella everywhere you go in Taiwan. Um, 
you know, the crowded subway, wall-to-wall subway cars, really bumpy buses full of smelly high schoolers, um, you know, people kind of constantly wanting to talk to you and practice their English on you, maybe when you're just having a day that you don't want to. Um, I found people commenting on my body frequently and, um, you know, but I, I, that's just a way of the Taiwanese showing their concern for you, but it was definitely jarring at first. Um, and also with regards to getting days off at work, that was definitely a challenge for me. You know, in the States, you're allotted a certain number of days that you can take off throughout the year, kind of no questions asked. Those are your personal days. In Taipei, there's not really the same thing. Um, you don't really get personal days. Obviously, if you're very sick, they don't want you coming in and will accommodate that. But otherwise, you are to find your own substitute and you pay the sub their hourly wage too. So if you do decide to take a day off, you want to make sure that you budget for that. And luckily, um, you know, a lot of your personal matters, going to the doctor, going to the bank, things like that can be taken care of after school because unlike the states where everything closes at five, typically offices and things in Taiwan had evening hours. So there was time to get things done after school. I felt very safe in Taiwan and I, and I feel that it's a very safe place to live. Um, I felt very comfortable coming home from a night out alone and like using public transportation very late into the night. Um, and obviously you need to be smart and you know, you don't want to be careless or reckless or like try to draw attention to yourself or, you know, like blatantly leave hundreds of dollars on in the open. But for the most part, you can, you can definitely expect to go about your daily life very comfortably. And I would say very worry free. Uh, to be completely honest, I've actually left my bags out on tables at restaurants or cafes you know, while I was talking to other people or going to the bathroom and then returned to those bags in the exact same place that I had left it. Um, if I had like left a belonging behind in a restaurant on accident, um, I've actually been chased out by the Taiwanese staff to make sure that I was returned that item. So, you know, this isn't necessarily an advertisement for you like to do all these things and try to put safety to the test. But uh, hopefully these experiences just offer some assurance as to why I feel Taiwan um, is very safe. And I think hopefully you'll feel safe as well, too. Taiwan. The housing is definitely adequate. Um, it might be smaller than what you're used to just because it is a big city. Um, Usually the housing is has tile and probably concrete walls, and that's just to kind of accommodate for the hurricanes and the ever-changing, very hot, humid weather of Taiwan. So, you know, that kind of made a challenge, like hanging stuff up on the walls. Um, it gets really cold in the winter, too, because there's not a lot of insulation, so definitely buy a space heater. You know, the kitchens are small. Um, they probably won't have an oven or a garbage disposal or a dishwasher. Um, but I think it's really common to eat out a lot in Taipei because you can get such good quality food as street food. So you might not be cooking that much at home anyway. The trash and recycling system at home takes a little while to get used to also, but it's very, um, it's very adaptable and the housing is, um, it's nice. It'll be, it's fine. So for the kindergarten curriculum, uh, we use Bridges, which is uh, made and updated and always curated by the folks at BGL. So there's, there's three levels of that for kindergarten, K1, K2, and K3. K1 is like three and four year olds, generally their first year of English learning. K2 is four and five year olds. K3 is five and six year olds, the more advanced kids. That's the last year of kindergarten there. And it's uh, great building blocks. I mean, they all build on each other. They all relate to each other. And there are songs, there's vocabulary, there's sentence structure, there's question and answer. Each chapter, I believe there are uh, four total chapters. There's two per semester, but they have a theme. So it would be, let's go shopping or transportation or let's, let's put on a performance. You know, there's uh, different themes that generally coincide with the themes that the local teachers are teaching in their own time. So they, they mesh very well together. How you teach those, there's a, there's a lot of leeway in that. There's definitely help and guidelines from the administration of how they'd like to do certain parts of it, but you are 
afforded a lot of your own um, creative leeway and your your own your own style in teaching it. And I when I when I worked there, there were seven different teachers. We all had seven very different styles. I think all very effective. So you have your base, but you're not tied to um, a certain way of doing it, which is more than you can say for most schools, I think. The daily schedule for Tai Xing goes like this. You come at 7.50 in the morning, and then you have uh, some time with your, generally your K3 class, your oldest class, um, which is about an hour where they're eating breakfast, uh, and you're just sort of walking around, hanging out with them. Maybe they're playing games, playing with toys. Um, so you're kind of getting to know them and just letting them see your face and, and helping out your local teachers. Sometimes there's uh, some time to prep in there, but for the most part, it's just to be there with the kids. Now, the only variations of that are sometimes you are on gate duty, which you have for one week every seven weeks, which is where you and another teacher are out at the front gate, and you're welcoming all the kids in. Hi, good morning, taking their temperature. It's fun. You get to see all the kids you know, all week. Uh, it's nice. Or if there's any sort of assembly or structured playtime, then everybody will go outside or stay inside if it's raining, which it does. And, you know, they'll be playing on bikes or cars or whatever. And the same thing. You're just out there playing with them, getting to know them. After that, you start your, your K3 class. And that's, that's kind of your homeroom. That's like your main class. You're with them all morning. That class is about two hours. You have Bridges, the, the curriculum about their English. And then you have like some phonics lessons as well. And you hit those every day. But as far as how you proceed with them, you're given a lot of freedom in how to do that. And if you're ever at a loss, the other teachers or administration has many ideas of how you can do that. Um, so that lasts until about noon, at which time uh, the kids have lunch and you eat lunch with them. And there's another time where you just, you know, you're, you're done teaching and you can just hang out with them. The lunches are provided and they're pretty good at Tsai Shen. I like them. I always ate them. Then you get about an hour off um, where you can leave campus, go take care of anything you want to, or you can go have lunch elsewhere. Come back at uh, 1, and from 1 to 2 is prep time, so whatever you need to catch up on or any paperwork or anything you need to do, just be on campus and available. Sometimes there are meetings in that time. I think we had weekly meetings, and it was just you know keeping us update on whatever is needed to be known at the school. Um, and then at 2 o'clock, the kids wake up from their nap, and you go to your K2 class or your K1 class, depending on what you're teaching. And you help your co-teachers wake them up, and then you walk them to the classroom. They have their snack, and you're in there prepping for class, but also just uh, socializing with the kids. And then at 2.30, um, and there's a little bit of, some classes do it a little bit differently, but for the most part, at 2.30, you start class with K2, and you have an hour with K2. Um, and the same as, same as K3, I mean, you have some phonics, you have some... Uh, bridges, and then your, you know, your whatever thematic teaching you're doing. If you're talking about kites or colors, whatever it is, so it's about an hour of class, and then when that's over, the, you help the co-teachers dismiss the kids. So they they do some goodbye songs, get their backpacks on, and then they dismiss the bus kids and the walkers. And so you're in there for about another half hour, and then come four o'clock, it's time to go. So I hope that answered some of your questions for this journey you're about to embark upon, upon which you're about to embark. Uh, if you have any questions and you'd like to ask me personally, feel free to talk to uh, anybody at BGL and you can exchange my information. I give my permission and get a hold of me. I can help you out. I, I stand behind these schools. I worked with them for three years and I still work with BGL. Um, they're good schools and as far as... Uh, as far as all the jobs I've seen and I have worked overseas, uh, Tsai Shing did me well, and I, I advocate it.